Uh, hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So the Hinman documents have been released today, and uh, you know, new information is coming out as I'm recording this video, so uh, I'm gonna try to get this one out as soon as possible for you guys. And because of the anticipation of these emails, uh, you know, we've been noticing XRP has been surging. It's now experiencing a surge of optimism as funds continue to flow, even in the face of the recession hit industry. Despite the challenges and uncertainties that have plagued the crypto market, XRP has managed to stand out, capturing the attention of investors and enthusiasts alike. But what exactly is fueling this impressive growth? Why is XRP able to maintain its momentum while well, others have been struggling? Of course, there is that anticipation, but uh, you know, if you're only in the crypto space, uh, you know, for superficial reasons, I guess, maybe you would not understand that. Just taking a look at this chart here, you can see XRP, one of the better performers in terms of weekly flows and month to date flows. Within the last week, the top cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, and there's no numbers for Binance. However, Binance has been decimated uh, just because of that recent news that we got from the SEC wanting to take down Binance now as well. Uh, so in a notable development, XRP has successfully attracted a surge of promising investment inflows as evidenced by the latest report from CoinShares. So you guys can see uh, the CoinShares report down in here. I will link this in the description of the video for you. We've even seen it on the charts though, guys. XRP price has been steadily increasing since that initial decline when we got the Binance Coinbase news. I'm going to combine the two because they just kind of, uh, you know, kind of came out at the same time. That was Friday, Saturday. We did see that decline, but XRP has rallied back up pre-negative news cycle. So we are now sitting in and around here, uh, you know, off its high of about 54 cents, give or take, but 53 cents. I will take it. The Hinman emails, at least from what I've seen so far, are proving to be very, very fruitful, positive for the XRP community, guys, and I think it is possible we are going to see a surge in price. XRP might even go higher over the next few days. So, uh, you know, just looking at the coin market cap here over the last seven days, we've got Bitcoin. It is up a little bit, but most coins, guys, as you can see, especially those ones hard hit by, uh, by the SEC news, have taken a huge hit, 15.16% down for Binance Coin. And take a look at Cardano, uh, down 20.78%. XRP, though, one of the better performers in the last seven days, and even in the last 24 hours. So in the last seven days, XRP is up 3.72%. Uh, and in the last 24 hours, it's even up 1.65%. You compare that with other cryptocurrencies, especially within the last uh, seven days, you can see all those coins that were hit by the SEC recently, AVAX, Avalanche, uh, some other ones, Polygon, Matic, Solana down 22.82%. So XRP dominance slowly going up. And it's funny, I mean, even compared to Bitcoin, just bring up Bitcoin here real quickly, Bitcoin uh, still hasn't recovered to that pre-news level yet. So uh, Bitcoin was trading in around almost $27,000. And right now, Bitcoin is trading at around 26.1. So hasn't really budged uh, too, too much. So the broader crypto cycle is being reflected in Bitcoin. Bitcoin hasn't moved too much. Other cryptocurrencies haven't moved too much. And now those altcoins that have been singled out by uh, brand new lawsuits are faring the same way XRP fared when it was announced that XRP was being sued by the SEC. So guys, this is nothing new. The market will recover. Diversifying into the crypto market this cycle around, I personally think that's the most prudent strategy. Moving forward, it might not be the sexiest strategy, but we're looking to make profits, guys. And this is uncharted waters considering the SEC is now going after so many cryptocurrencies. And you know, you thought your crypto was safe, but I mean, now they're going after Solana, they're going after Matic, they're going after AVAC, uh, and who knows what else, all those cryptocurrencies that were delisted from backed. I think that that is a good clue as to, uh, you know, where the SEC may target their sites next. So for only $5 a month, I'm going to be posting my trades, going to be posting them on the days that they occur. I'm also going to be talking about cost averaging. We've already seen some supply zones hit for some of those cryptocurrencies. So ultimately, guys, we are in a bull run. And, uh, you know, this is probably the best time to be joining the Patreon because it's only going to get more exciting from here. I've got the total market cap up here. And uh, you guys can see, even despite the negative news, we're still making those higher lows, higher highs. So stay tuned. Land and Mary is here on Twitter posting this. I've told you that they are trying to destroy virtual currencies. I've also told you it will fail. And then the most gigantic virtual currency bull run in human history resumes. Retweeting out Senator Bill Haggerty's tweet, make no mistake, the SEC's attempts to undermine the digital asset industry is a deliberate move. Gary Gensler has made it clear that he wants to see private cryptocurrencies fail to make way for a central bank digital currency. Listen to this. I, I get very concerned about the government trying to usurp 
digital currencies because they not only have an interest in being the monopoly player in currency, but also because these central bank digital currencies can become a method of tracking, of finding out what you're doing, where you're spending your money. Absolutely. That makes me very nervous, and I see what Gensler doing as a, a strong step down that road. Yeah, he's finally started to say the silent part out loud. That is exactly where I think this is headed. You know, they prefer the central bank digital currency. He's basically saying there's no need for, you know, other digital currencies that, that, that we're talking about, that they're coming in, they're calling securities just so they can come and charge, you know, Coinbase in arrears. You think about the hypocrisy here. Just over two years ago, the SEC approved Coinbase's IPO. Mm -hmm. Coinbase mm -hmm. explained their business model. Right. They explained their staking program. The SEC approved all of that. Now they're turning around and saying this is illegal activity. Again, I think there's an ulterior motive here, and I think mm. you just articulated it. I mean, it is hypocrisy, and now finally mainstream media is catching on. Fox Business has always kind of been ahead of the rest of the crowd when dealing with crypto news in a mainstream arena. So that was a great clip from then, guys. I also happen to see this. The crypto meme guy posted this. Mike Novogratz mentioned the Hinman emails on Bloomberg just yesterday. Listen to this. Approval. And so, you know, it's complicated. Uh, it doesn't feel uh, it's the way it should be done, right? Congress should legislate who gets to regulate. Uh, there's a big lawsuit that will play out in the next few months with Ripple. Um, yeah, there's some information coming out tomorrow uh, from a speech that uh, one of the SEC commissioners had made where he broadly said, this is how we look at securities and non-securities. Um, you know, the SEC fought to keep that speech from coming out. It's coming out. But we'll see. Does the SEC even have the right to, 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 to regulate the, the digital assets? And so a lot of complication. What it means for the market is institutional investors just get nervous. So putting it out there, mentioning the Hinman emails with relation to the Ripple case, guys, this is what we've been waiting for in the next 38 hours will be critical for crypto. This coming from Meta Lawman. Today, 5 p.m., Binance files its opposition to the SEC's motion for order freezing assets of Binance.us, which is a completely different story that, uh, you know, I wish I could be also following uh, kind of in the same capacity. We're going to touch uh, a little bit on that this afternoon. Tomorrow, 2 p.m. hearing on SEC's motion to freeze assets. Tomorrow, sometime release of summary judgment exhibits, including the Hinman emails in the Ripple case. So, guys, that is what we are now focusing on. Wheezy at Nerd Nation Unbox posting this, the Crypto Basic article. Brad Garlinghouse has come out assuring the crypto community that the Hinman documents set to go public today are well worth the wait. So he did make an announcement. Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, continues to emphasize the importance of the documents relating to the speech given by the former SEC director William Hinman in 2018. In a recent statement, Garlinghouse assured the public that the documents are well worth the wait. This remark came less than 24 hours before the set date for the public release of the documents. And I've got the Jungle Inc. Uh, tweet here. Hey, Brad Garlinghouse, any thoughts ahead of the Hinman doc release? We all appreciate Ripple fighting for this important public disclosure. And Brad Garlinghouse uh, did respond here. I wish I could go into depth now, but we've waited this long, 18 plus months. I don't want to overstep. Suffice it to say, though, Stuart Alderati and I believe they were well worth the wait. Great comment here from Brad Garlinghouse. And I uh, wanted to thank Jungle Inc. as well. For posting that. Now, we've got them, guys. They are coming out. Mr. Hubert has been on top of this this morning, and uh, in real time, I know as I'm recording this, there's probably more that are coming out. Ripple started filing, so Securities and Exchange Commission versus Ripple Labs. You guys can see what has been filed already, so let me get into this. Well, we've got Digital Asset Investor. The first things that came out were not the emails, but some other documents, okay? Now we know Vitalik was on the phone with Hinman before the Ethereum free pass speech. And he's referencing this tweet from December of 2020 when it was announced that Ripple got sued by the SEC. And his smarmy comment then does not look so good today, does it? So I will link this in the description. I'm not gonna go over Vitalik's comment then because we've got bigger things to cover. Hinman is instructed by his own colleagues that the speech will cause confusion and provide fewer details to give the SEC more leeway. That Hinman does not comply is his own. That Hinman's speech is subsequently supported by the Clinton administration anyway and covered up by the Gensler administration is another far worse and corrupt. So uh, this tweeted out by Neil Hartner. Essentially documents suggesting that the Hinman speech would lead to greater confusion and deliberately recommended giving industry participants less details. So guys, the Hinman speech was supposed to be vague and unclear. According to their inner communications, why am I not surprised? 
Uh, there's also this, Bill Morgan. This will do it for me. Holy crap on a cracker. Ethereum's founder was involved in the process leading to a speech giving Ethereum a loan. Special clarity. This is just wrong on every level. So Bill Morgan just going through some of this here uh, with regards to the tweet thread that he posted. Here are the first two extracts uh, covering a passage in Rule 56.1 statement. There was some internal debate about whether to include Ethereum. No problem. Let's just call Buterin for an unbiased opinion on how Ethereum works. We will just trust what he says. And so uh, right here, we've got uh, Hinman inserted an alternative to the proposed Ether language, which could be used on Ether if we need to hedge an issue a bit at the time of the speech. On June 4th, Hinman shared a draft uh, of the speech with the SEC division heads and wrote that the proposed language about Ether is in brackets and would be used if we are all in agreement. And adding, uh, we also have a call with Buterin later on this week to confirm our understanding of how the Ethereum Foundation operates, suggesting that the draft did not reflect Hinman's understanding of how the Ethereum Foundation operates. Ouch. Uh, another extract, but the OGC concerns. Uh, it may impact on what the SEC says about Ethereum in the future. No problem with those concerns. Hinman spoke to Buterin and understands how Ethereum works. The Ether discussion stays in the speech. So, you know, our inclinations as the XRP army, uh, understanding, suspecting, I guess, is more apropos that there was an ETHgate scandal behind the scenes. You know, even Charles Hoskinson's came out and said, you know, you guys think that there's this big conspiracy. There's nothing like that. Well, now it has proven we have finally been vindicated, XRP community. The SEC's Office of General Counsel proposed deleting the draft's language about Ether in its entirety, writing, we still have reservations about including a statement directly about Ether in the speech, in part because the statement would make it difficult for the agency to take a different position on Ether in the future. So that was also mentioned here. Notwithstanding the OGC's expressed concerns and proposals uh, to remove the language about Ether from the draft, the final version of the speech included a discussion about Ether. And so there is more. I will link, uh, you know, all these tweet threads in the description of the video. Bill goes on and gives his uh, two cents on, uh, you know, some of this extra information. Fred Rispoli here also responding. Well, after looking at the unredacted Ripple opposition to the SEC's MSJ and Rule 56.1, it's disgusting how the SEC operated. Disgusting how it let Hinman get away with that speech. Disgusting how SEC purposefully made it official behind the scenes policy to deliberately sow market confusion. And it's very clear that, yes, hands down, no more guessing, totally for reals, ETHgate actually happened. It is confirmed, guys. I can't see any way the SEC wins its uh, motion for summary judgment, and I think you will find it extremely obvious why both judges in this case ordered those docs to be produced. Don't worry about reading it yet. Uh, Finland Law will be up in a few hours to post everything. Uh, the money shot is in the Ripple uh, 56.1 in opposition to the SEC's motion for summary judgment. Well, guys, those documents have, in fact, been released. Wrath of Kahneman also pointing this out. The SEC's Office of General Counsel told Hinman his speech was confusing. They wanted him to tie more closely to Howie, but his attempt was convoluted enough. They thought it would lead to greater confusion. What is a security? So even just pointing that out here, the OGC again proposed deleting that section of the uh, second factor on June 12th, in part because the SEC has rejected that view in prior guidance. On June 12th, TM again raised a concern about the second factor, as well as other factors, writing, we appreciate your efforts to link these more closely to the factors in the Howey test. However, because the list of factors is so extensive and appears to include things that go beyond the typical Howey analysis, we have concerns this might lead to greater confusion on what is a security. Despite the repeated concerns raised by OGC and TM, the second factor was included in the final version of the speech. So they knew it was intentionally uh, confusing. They knew it was confusing, yet they still let it go through and they pretended like, oh, wait, this is, you know, guidance, not guidance. You know, they're even flip flopping on that. A point months ago. There was even a bit of a shocker down here. Crypto Arsenal picked up on this. Uh, Wrath of Kahneman, did you see this? Courtesy of Mr. Hubert. Uh, the fact that there was uh, there was a typo here. Somebody was saying that, uh, you know, there was an error uh, and that uh, the summary judgment, I think, was going to be uploaded next. But that was, in fact, an error, it says here, summary judgment, order granted, 822 motion. Uh, but that was, uh, I think, just a typo or an error or maybe, um, you know, a technical error uh, on the IT side. So what do we have, guys? And uh, as I was, uh, you know, finishing up the research for this video, Mr. Hubert was just uncovering these, you know, minutes before I was about to record this video. So this is fresh news. As of the time of this recording, they pointed out to Hinman 
that what he says about Ethereum contradicts the rest of his speech, arguing more for Ethereum being actually a security. And here's a quote, guys. We still have reservations about including a statement directly about Ethereum in the speech. Uh, even with the caveats in the sentence, it seems that it would be difficult for the agency to take a different position on Ether in the future. By the way, this is directly from the emails. Further, the rest of the paragraph strongly implies that the thinking applies to Ether. Without the sentence about Ether, those implications might generate a useful reaction about Ether from purchasers or those in the fintech space. With the sentence, the, uh, the reaction seems less likely to focus on the analysis and more likely to focus on the potential fallout of making a direct statement about Ether's status as a security. And guys, here's the comment. We still have reservations about including a statement directly about Ether in the speech. This was written in the Hinman emails, even with the caveats in the sentence, it seems that it would be difficult for the agency to take a different position on Ether in the future. There were backdoor dealings going on with Ether, guys. ETHgate is real. ETHgate is real. Further to the rest of the paragraph strongly implies that the thinking applies to Ether. Without the sentence about Ether, those implications uh, might generate a useful redaction about Ether from purchasers uh, or those in the fintech space. With the sentence, the reaction seems less likely to focus on the analysis and more to focus on the potential fallout of uh, making a direct statement about Ether's status as a security. Uh, and then Mr. Hubert, he was following up with this. So again, guys, this is happening in real time. The potential fallout of making a direct statement about Ethereum status as a security. With the sentence about Ether, the redaction seems less likely to focus on the analysis and more likely to focus on the potential fallout of making a direct statement about Ether's status as a security. So that is loaded right there. Uh, and as we can see, Mr. Hubert, I'm just on his Twitter page right now. And uh, as you guys can see, more is coming out as I'm refreshing. Uh, Mr. Uh, John, uh, sorry, John Deaton here from seven minutes ago. All I'll say right now, when I filed the case against the SEC nine days after the Ripple lawsuit on January the 1st, 2021, and when I highlighted the ether free pass and all the conflicts of interest and appearances of impropriety involved, I own 10 times more Bitcoin uh, and four times more in ether than I did XRP. Sometimes it can't just be about your bags. Uh, and, and that's a that's a very good point. Uh, so again, we're seeing all this information coming out. An excellent indicator of who is being bribed, as per Mr. Hubert, four minutes ago. Eleanor Turret tweeted this out 14 minutes ago. New, here are the comments from the Trading and Markets Department in response to Hinman's draft. This speech is what the general public uh, and market participants have been asking for. So we are very supportive in the speech and what it is communicating. So uh, we got that here as general overall comment. The speech is what the general public... Okay, so exactly what she had just quoted there. Uh, Mr. Hubert, we have the emails, we have the videos, we have the names, we have the receipts, we have the timeline. The only thing we're still waiting on is an uncorrupted judiciary. So guys, more with regards to the emails here, the parts in which Ethereum is mentioned are still censored. Why? According to the documents, it can be assumed that Ethereum would actually have been classified as a security. The court ordered nothing to be censored, right? Why is the most important part now censored after all. Because the SEC has argued that it is about ongoing proceedings. Is Ethereum this ongoing proceedings? Very good question here. But Mr. Hubert uh, doing his part here uh, and has actually released the emails here. Let me go down here further. He did. Uh, so he has actually released uh, quite a few tweets since I started recording this video. Uh, and so, but here they are, guys. I'm going to link this in the description of the video for you guys. Here are the actual emails. Uh, so, and, and he lists them, okay? Pages one to four, pages five to eight, down here, pages nine to 12, down here, 12 to 15. Uh, and so that is what we've gotten so far. But as you guys can see, there's more coming out by the minute. So, um, I mean, Mr. Hubert has been on it today as of two minutes ago, asking the Ethereum founders for advice on an upcoming speech only to talk about in the speech that they can't see a third party promoter. Looks a little clumsy to me. Crypto Eddie posted this. Remember, people didn't believe ETHgate was real. Fact, before making a blanket statement on Ethereum, the SEC went to Buterin or his counsel to discuss. Discuss what? I thought determining if an asset is a security or not was based on the law. So the SEC has been caught red-handed. I wonder what's going to come out of this, guys. We've got some more information uh, that I'm working on for uh, this afternoon's video. But for now, this is what we've got. The Hinman emails have been released. Tell me down in the comments what you guys think. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.